Now today, um, before we get back to corporate worship, I feel like there are some things that I it's been burdened uh, uh, on my heart uh, for a long time, and oftentimes we do not address. What is it? Uh, today we want to have a, a special, a closer look on depression. What exactly are uh, is depressions? Oftentimes, you know, we hear um, you know friends joking around. We will you know complain of about things not going our way. And then sometimes we will go like, oh, I think I'm depressed. I'm so depressed, I'm depressed, right? Uh, you hear that all the time. But what exactly is depression? I can tell you that, you know, for those people that complain about being depressed, maybe borderline, they are getting close to it. So what exactly is depression? Depressions, um, it's more than sadness, you know, because of life, because of sufferings. We go through life, we have many challenges. Every time when something upsets us, whether it is uh, losing a job or whether it is failing a task or it is uh, hearing a gossip against you by uh, some friends or even the passing of loved ones, you know, or simple things as moving to a new location, a new school. All these things can upset us emotionally. But that is just normal sadness. It's a normal emotion that give us a warning. Something didn't go right. It could be that we need to grow in that area. We need to be stronger. Uh, that's a lesson for us to learn. But there are times when this deep sadness lasts way longer. You know, medically, oftentimes they will say that when you have this intensity of sadness lasts more than two weeks, that's the timeline that they look at. And very possibly, you can be in depression. Now, there is really no cure because in life, basically, we will always go through life circumstances and challenges. And because of that, we will experience episodes of depression. That is, from time to time, we might be depressed. Now, today, we're going to look at what is the root cause of all this and what are the misconceptions of this. And more importantly, how do we really deal with this? Now, this illness, mental illness, mind you, if you find that today after I share with you, you might be depressed. Now, let's not be shocked because why? This is a very, very common mental illness. Now, it's, we all suffer in different degree. You know, hopefully, none of us find that we need help with a medical doctor because there are times you need medications to handle this issue. And before I go um, into the deeper this, <clears throat> let me just talk about depression. First of all, it's nothing new. You know, we probably all have experienced it. And when we want to look for information about depression, actually, there's no better books to look at than the book of Job. Why? Because I have long shared before that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, the wisest book in the Bible. Why? Because the book of Job, the theme is always about God's sovereignty and suffering. If God loves us so much, why God allow suffering? Now you can see here when Job he lost his families, his um uh, uh, assets, you know things that he owns, and even his physical health. There are many episodes uh, where you will hear Job complain. When you are so depressed, in the worst case scenario you can be societal. That's the reason why I want to share this with you all because it is my deepest concern that if one of us find ourselves in deep depression, I want you to know that you are not alone. We need to talk about it and you need a support system. You need brother and sister in Christ to come together to surround you, to care for you and to 
know, make sure that you know that God loves you and we love you all. Now, this is what happened to Job. He complained, why did I not die at birth? Come out from the wombs and expire. Isn't that sometimes that's how we express our frustration? Ah, oh, life is so hard, right? I might as well just, you know, not live this life, right? It's terrible. So we can see the commonality between Job's complaints and our daily struggle. And what's more in Job's 30, um, 15 to 17, it says, What terrors are turned upon me? My honor is pursued as by the wind, and my prosperity has passed away like a cloud. And now my soul is poured out within me. Days of affliction has taken hold of me. The night wrecks my bones, and the pain that gnaws me takes no rest. This is what I have shared earlier. When you are in deep depression, it normally it can take weeks, if not months. And it is intense pain that you will experience mentally, psychologically. Look at the last two words. The night wrecks my bones. The pains that normies take no rest. It's just this intensities of pain that you are going through. Sometimes it can be manifested in a physical way, but oftentimes it's emotions and mental states. I like to share with you something, you know, on the lighter tones. This is what peanuts, right? It was so popular at one point because it always um, has its ways <clears throat> to share a love with us, right? Through our daily struggle. This is what uh, I think. I assume it's Charlie Brown. Um, sometimes I lie awake at night and I ask, where have I gone wrong? Then a voice say to me, this is, um, this is going to take more than one night. It is so true when you are depressed. It can take more than one night. And this is the article that just came out on uh, May 2nd, talking about our mental health crash in 2020 and recovery could take years. You see, oftentimes when we pay attention to all the data of the uh, rising cases of COVID-19 and the fertil fertility rate, you know, how many people passed away, didn't make it through. But at the meantime, we haven't looked at all the mentor uh, uh, struggles that we all experience because of this. Now, I have worse news for you. Actually, now the new study come out. Oh, wait, it's the next slide. Okay, let's come here first. So talking about anxieties and uh, depressive order, you know, the, uh, this is by the Kaiser uh, Families uh, Foundation's research. Guess which age group suffer the most? It is the one that with the least life experience. Oftentimes, they do not have the, the arsenals to handle all this life pressure. So among the adults from age to 18 and 24, based on the studies, 56.2% of you have experienced symptoms of depression. That's the young adults age group. Young adult, pay attention. Now, this is a comparison um, between uh, January 2019 and January 2021. Again, average shares of adults experience depression jump from 11% all the way to almost half of the adult population of 41%. This is very, very true. We are not just talking about the virus pandemic, but our mental health is another big issue that we all need to address. Now, I, earlier I said that I have worse news for you. This is what I just find out. It also just came out not long ago, April 7. COVID-19 actually links to depression and dementia. What does it mean? It means that for the survivors of COVID-19, that means people like me, 
I contracted the virus on um, uh, March 2020. Uh, you know, while I always say that we should not have fear, you know, we should trust God, take all the precautions, and your life is in God's hands. But it is true, they are after effect of the COVID-19. And more and more studies now shows that actually one of them is depression and dementia. So when you have contracted COVID-19 at one point throughout this period, you have a higher uh, a percentage of feeling depressed. Now with that in mind, what exactly is depression? What symptoms are they? Actually, there are many different types of depressions. I'm just going to show you briefly. Um, they are the major depressive uh, disorder, um, bipolar depressions, and seasonal affective, uh, affective uh, uh, disorder. And uh, they are also the one that you know, is very typical among the women. They're uh, postpartum. They basically, after giving birth, oftentimes women can fall into uh, depressions. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms are you feel helpless. You feel guilty. You are angry at something. And then watch out for these symptoms. You start to withdraw from your friends and family. You cannot concentrate on work, on your study. And this is the one that we need to look out for. You start to have suicidal thoughts. You change your appetite, change, and you have no energy. You are constantly feeling lethargic. Well, that's what I call you know, just tired all the time. No motivation. Don't feel like doing anything. And you have sleeping problems. And oftentimes, in order to cope, people you know, build up this um, bad habit of um, drinking alcohol or even getting involved with uh, drug abuse. So these are all signs and symptoms of depressions that we need to look out for. So let's ask all ask ourselves, how have we been doing for this past um, one and a half year? Do we experience any of that? that Somehow you cannot put your mind together to get a task done. You have no energy. You have sleeping problem. You don't feel like talking to anyone anymore. And then, you know, you build up some unhealthy habits. Um, maybe you are uh, uh, consume a lot of sleeping pills just to help you in your sleep. Or you are constantly feeling guilty as if like you can't really pinpoint what exactly go wrong. It's just this constant clouds that sadden you. Well, if you experience one of these symptoms, very likely you are depressed. And as I say, this is a very common mental illness. So if you realize that you can be depressed, don't feel bad because God is our ever present hell amen brother and sister now before i go deeper into the god's work i just want to make sure you understand that there's a situation there a depression versus clinical depression what does it say situational depression basically is a short-term stress related types of depressions it can develop after you experience a traumatic event or a series of events basically as i mentioned before is the most common type of depression as we go through life we experience life circumstances sometimes that are very stressful to us and we can have that episode of depression it is mostly situational events like you know problem at work or school you are you're not feeling well or the passing of loved one Right, a relationship problem and moving. I think I, I earlier I mentioned all of this. Now, what about clinical depression? This is a situation where there are basically chemical in, uh, imbalance in your body. 
whether it is your among your brain or there's something that's related to your brains that puts you in a perpetual uh, uh, depression. Now, is clinical depression always caused by sins? Not really. Because we all know that we all live in a sinful world. Even us as Christians, we live with the consequences of sins in our physical body, in this physical world. All this thing is temporary, but while we are here, we will suffer. And this is just how it is. So sometimes there are people that need medical doctors because this is something that medical doctor can help, not exactly cure because there's no cure for depression, but with certain medication, it can help you to lighten the impact, the effect of uh, clinical depression, to, not to the point where someone will take their own life because in the worst case scenario of depression, oftentimes it will lead to suicide. So, uh, when we do the MRI scan, actually we can tell that someone with chronic depression, the frontal cortex is, you know, basically the blood flow and the metabolism is looks different. We know that medically they can tell if you are um, clinically depressed. However, what is the cause of it? Up until now, no one can tell. Now I'm gonna share with you some encouraging work after this and for not knowing what's the reason, right? But commonly, these are the five causes of depression. Number one, it is our own sins, our own unbelief, our own pride. It can cause depression because we are not trusting God, we are not putting our faith in God and we live sinful lifestyle, right? And second, it can be caused by sinful people around us, which is you know the world that we live in. People can hurt you by saying mean things, or people can even purposely spreading rumors to hurt you. Right I hear about all this uh, on the social media. It's kind of common among the young people, right? There are people going around just saying bad things, spreading rumors and stuff, and that's the reality we all have to deal with. So you felt hurt, and I think um. Among teenagers, um, you know, sometimes young people take their own life just because they were, uh, you know, they were cyber bully uh, on the case, and then they, they cannot even you know, see the end of it, and then they end up taking their own life. And the number three cause is the one that I talk about: the chemical imbalance in our physical body, and also be mindful of medication because some medication, the side effect of it, cause depression. So, you see, I'm a pastor, I believe in medication, but you know, if you know me, you know that medication is always my last resort. You know, I believe in doctor, but I'm not the kind of person that will call up the doctor for every single little thing, right? And that's in a sense that you can, well, uh, to be fair, when I contracted the virus last March, there was so early on, that basically there are no tests available, uh, no doctor to see, you know, pretty much I just tough it through for three weeks and that's about it. Well, I will not advise you to do that. It really depends on how your body can handle uh, the effect. But um, trust God, you know, and pray for the doctor if you need to see the doctor, right? But make sure everything in moderation because overdose is another big issue. Um, especially if you look at um, US situation, the painkiller, um, is causing a big issue now because become, people become addicted to it and they are, you know. So another one obviously is spiritual attack. Sometimes, especially people in the front line of uh, prayer warrior or uh, intercessions or uh, people dealing with, you know, I mentioned it many times, we live in the real physical world. I am a man of science. I believe in science, but yet I believe the science that include our creator God. While we believe in the creator God, we also believe in God's enemy, Satan. So there are times it is true, people can be demon-possessed. And these are 
of spiritual attacks that we talk about. And then last but not least, this is the one that we all, as we go through this difficult period of depression, if some of you are going through it, you need to understand that sometimes it is by God's sovereignty and He allows it. There you go. When you understand these causes, you can put your faith in God and know that you are still in God's hand, even though emotionally, or even physically or mentally, you don't feel right. But you can continue to trust God. Now, what are the misconceptions about depression? We need to talk about it. You know, number one, in order for us to address this issue, we need to understand that this is real. This is a very real mental illness. And number two, depression is not always about sins. As I say, you know, we live in a sinful world, we live in an imperfect world. Sometimes people just suffer. And depression is not always a punishment from God. It's just like any other physical illness. Like, remember Jesus, when people were asked about the blind man that was born blind, Jesus' address is only, well, this is an occasion for the Son of God to show God's glory. Amen? It is not that uh, we shouldn't have this attitude that we will put down all the people. Oh, you know, you are depressed. You know, you're going through these uh, difficult times because there's something that you've done wrong. Well, it can be the case. It shouldn't be always that case. So before we form any judgment against others, let's be careful with our words. And another misconception, if uh, the situation that you're dealing with is has to do with the imbalanced chemicals of your body, then that means what? Sometimes you pray and miracles happen and you have faith and God can heal you, amen. But there are times prayer and faith does not help all the way. You still need help with medication. And the another misconception is you, if you're depressed, you cannot function, you cannot do anything wrong, actually. Actually, if you are depressed, that just means that you are human, just like every single one of us. As I mentioned, this is very common. We all experience depression. One of the ways I will share with you later on to cope with depression, actually, you need to keep your routine. Keep living your life. Amen. I will get to it later. So basically, these are the cause and the misconception. Now, in the worst scenario, as I say, depression can lead to suicide. For the 8,000 Americans take their own life. Every day, there are 132 people take their own life. One out of four, you know, among the young adults and up, they are depressed. In U.S., it is the 10th leading cause of death. Now, pay attention. Do you know what? Because among the teenagers, suicide actually is the second leading cause. And you would think to yourself, oh, young people, you know, what kind of stress are, that, are they facing, right? They don't have bill to pay. They don't have uh, 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 responsibility to take care of the household, uh, this and that. And yet, why among the young people, suicide is so common? That's because oftentimes they fall into depressions and they do not know how to cope with that. Whatever the cause, young people oftentimes they are short-sighted and when they don't have good support group around them, the first thing that they thought of, and their own life. So this is a very alarming statistics. So we need to learn to have compassion as brother and sister in Christ, to care for one another, to support one another, and not to form judgment so easily. Amen? Now, this is where they said when the news broke. Uh, this is back in, I believe, 2019. Actually, um, Jarek uh, Wilson he is the associate pastor of, um, I believe it's uh, Harvest Fellowship Church by um, uh, Greg Laurie in California. It's a mega church. 
And what so special about this uh, pastor is actually he has long known to suffer from depression and he has become an active advocate for mental health. And sadly, um, what happened um, the day before um, global, uh, um, I think it's, let me see, uh, what do you call that? It is called World Suicide Prevention Day. The day before it, on the eve of that, he shared a tweet. And in this tweet, he is crying out for help. He said what? Loving Jesus doesn't always cure societal thoughts. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure depression. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure PTSD. Loving Jesus doesn't always cure anxiety. But that doesn't mean Jesus doesn't offer us companionship and comfort. He always does that. Not long after he shared that tweet, he and his own life. It is very sad for someone that are so well aware of the issue and yet he cannot help to fight the symptoms and he ended up ending his own life. So you see, doesn't matter who you are, you're a pastor, you're a church worker, you pray a lot, nobody is immune to depression because nobody is immune to life suffering. Sometimes our suffering can be so intense that, you know, in our short moments, we end up making a wrong decision. So, be aware. Now, you might think that since depression leads to suicide, are there actually examples in the Bible? Yeah, there's so many of them. Now, I want to share with you, you know about the story of Jonah, right? Um, God asked Jonah to share the, you know, God's uh, deliverance and salvation right, to the city of Nadavah, and he refused. Right, because in his own self-righteous way, he think that you know the people of Nineveh they don't deserve it, right? So what happened? Basically, we all know the whole episode about he was swallowed by the whale, right? And then eventually he uh, 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 submitted to God. He shared the good news, and then the people, the city, the people in the city, they repented. And then he got so upset because of his own self-righteousness, and to the point, this is what he said. God asked him. And he asked that he might die and say, right, this Jonah, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plan? And he said, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. You see, this is a prophet. Just, you know, uh, he, he, he just, uh, out of his, you know, reluctance, obedience, he uh, bring great salvation to the city, city of Nineveh. And the next thing you know, he fell into deep depressions and he was about to, you know, taking his own life or at least he complained about taking his own life with God, right? And another more famous um, episode that is, I think if I look at this, you know, um, uh, the one of the greatest prophets, right? Elijah. It's like, it is so, uh, isn't it obvious that what he ex experienced is kind of bipolar de uh, depression because what happened? God used him to challenge the um, false prophets of um, Bayar, right? And uh, Astara, you know, um, with the evil queen uh, Jezebel, right? So he challenged them. They set up altar. He said that, you know, if your God is a true living God, you know, lit the uh, altar on fire, right? They put sacrifice on it, you know, so the, or, or, or the false prophet, you know, they are not able to perform that miracle. Elijah, on the other hand, he poured water on the altar and then he called up and then sky fire came down and consumed the sacrifice to bear witness that, you know, um, God is a real God. And then from that point on, he killed so many of the false prophets. And guess what? After that, after that, he got news that Queen Jezebel is after his own life. He started to run, 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 run until he ran out of you know, uh, uh, the air, air. And he just ran out of gas. He sat down 
and then he fell to deep depression. And this is what he said. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my fathers. This is one of the greatest prophets that perform great miracles for God. And yet, he fell into deep depression. He was about to end his life like Job, like Jonah. Now, what about us? How do we actually cope? You know, I, hopefully, hopefully, I, you know, in your prayer, you don't tell God that, oh, God, I'm so in pain. You might as well take my own life. Hopefully, you are not that individual. Our prayer reach out to you. But this is, you know, I, I want to share on a lighter note, right? Because it's a very serious subject. Let's just face it. Most of us, we all find ways to cope with it. Whether you realize you are in depression or not, as you go through episode of epi uh, uh, depression, so some of us actually pick up very bad habit, right? Throughout this one and a half year, what do we do? If this is you, my point is that you can be depressed. You just didn't realize it. So what do you do? You pick terrible coping skill. You game all day, either that. Or worse than that, and then you lock yourself in your own rooms, right? Isolate myself for days. And then you, some of you, what? You binge watch on Netflix. You know, I'm always neutral on technology. I think you cannot blame the technology. You cannot blame social media. It's on you. You are the one that need to make the decision, right? What else? Some of you browsing Reddit for hours. You know, for young people, you know what Reddit is, right? They all, all kind of crazy stuff on it. Just wasting hours away. Some of you, basically, you should stop eating. Some of you, emotional eating. That's when, don't you know that all the uh, food company that, you know, they have many brands, carry many brands for junk food. The sales skyrocket throughout this period. <laughs> because people, you know, it's comfort eating. You know, how oh, keep, you know, piling on the chocolates and stuff. And what? Some of you crying to the pillow. If it is you, don't tell me. It's fine. It's okay. It totally, it's between you and God. Amen. <laughs> and some of you just get really messy. You stop taking shower. Don't clean up your room. You just don't do anything at all. Does any one of this happen to you? Now, on serious note, maybe you are depressed and this is your way of coping. Now, I will not recommend this because these are all very really poor habits. We need to go back out. We need to you know, get back to God and meet in person. So, these are more for like a, a the adult, right? Uh, and our peanut strips. Uh, boy, am I ever depressed. Well, somebody else is depressed too. I see. <laughs> and then, Charlie Brown say what? That's the only thing that could possibly have cheered me up. <laughs> you know, we, we, uh, we gain on other people's sufferings. Very sad, right? You know, uh, but, well, truth to be told, uh, that's very common among the adults, right? Always comparing yourself to your neighbors or to whoever that's doing better than you. And then sometimes, you know, when you, once you, when you hear that they struggle, this and that, oh, you feel better about yourself, right? It's, it's just, it's not right. Well, anyway, let's get back to what the Bible says about depression. So how can a Christian overcome depression? Now, first and foremost, there are many resources out there, right? And this is what Job said. When Job experienced his whole suffering, you know, uh, financially, uh, uh, his children all passed away. Physically, he, he has, you know, terrible sorrow. He was dying. And he challenged God. But we have always have to remember when we look at the book of Job, why such suffering happened to Job. Because there were appear before God and ask for God's permission. There were challenge God. He said, you know what? Job, he only is so loyal and faithful to you because of your protection on him. So there was saying that, you know, we as believers, right? 
our love for God is only conditional. We only love God so much as God take care of all of our needs. Right? So God say, okay, I will remove of, uh, uh, the hedge of protection from Job. You can touch everything, but you cannot take his life. So that's the challenge. That's the ultimate struggle. Will Job curse God? Will Job give up his faith on God in the face of great suffering? So this is what Job said in 13 and 15. He said, though he slay me, he's talking about God. This is his faith. Even if God will kill me one day, I will hope in him. Yet I will argue my ways to his face. So what Job is saying that, you know, if God is going to decide to take my life, let it be, I will still continue to trust him. But, you know, of course, I'm going to argue my case, right? What, if this is not fair, God, right? But Job, through all of his audios, he never give up God. And at the end of the book of Job, this is the revelation that all of us need to learn. What is it? Job finally say, I have heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. So at the end of his suffering, Job, he gained something. What does he gain? He gained a new revelation of God. And this is what we are going through, brother and sister. We are going through these terrible times of pandemic. What can God achieve all of this? We have loved one pass away. We have people losing the job financially. They are challenged. Uh, you know, students are challenged in the study. What do we get to learn from all of this? We get to gain a new revelation about God. That's why we have shared throughout this period, this is the time for us to grow spiritually because you will never see God the old way. From this point on, throughout all the struggle, you gain heart of wisdom and knowledge and endearments. You understand God in a brand new way. Amen, brother and sister. So what about depressions? That is something that we can learn from. We can learn to have compassion for others that are going through the same situation. We can learn to know how to cope it when we are going through difficult times. So these are a few things. You know, it's pretty much, it's very general. When you are going through a difficult time, what do you do? You need a strong support network. That is, brother and sister in Christ, we need to be there for one another. You need to keep up with the house chore. Huh? Simple things, right? Yes, it is so true. We need to keep up our routines. You know, you having no need to see other people doesn't need doesn't mean that you, sh you should be messy, you shouldn't take care, you know, shouldn't even take shower, and all this. Keep up the routines. Keep your rooms clean. Keep your gardens good looking. Keep up your schoolwork. Do nice job. All these things. If you like to cook, cook, right? Eating is very important. Develop good nutrition. You need to eat healthily instead of just, you know, piling on on junk foods, right? Keep your timetable, do your work, right? all these things and basic things. And most importantly, you need to sleep well. Okay. So let me share with you the difference between Peter and Judas. In a way, they both betrayed Jesus and they were both depressed. We all know that Ju Judas, he, um, you know, he changed his mind. He returned the 30 pieces of silver that he gained from the betrayer of Jesus to the high priest. And then what? You know, I say, I don't want the money anymore, right? You know, I cannot believe that I, I have, you know, helped you take the life of an innocent man. But then he went away. He was depressed. He has no support group around him. He was isolated. He was all alone. And he and his own life. But what about Peter? Peter denied Jesus three times. When Jesus was hanged on the cross, you know, the Bible tells us that John was nearby with, you know, Mary and uh, Mary Magdalene you know, and, and the other believers. 
there was no mention of Peter. We're not sure where Peter is. But on the day when Mary Magdalene find out that Jesus has resurrected, right away, you see the Bible tells us that what? Peter was with John and they ran straight to the empty domes to see Jesus. What does it mean? It means that Peter, he has good support group. Even though he was depressed, maybe for a short period of time, he was isolated, but he still had good friends around him to keep him grounded. And then it's funny thing that after they met the resurrected Jesus, remember uh, where Jesus met them at one point, and then he asked Peter three times, do you still love me? What was Peter doing? Peter and John and the other disciples, they were fishing. See, what does it say? To keep up your household chores, develop a routine. Peter was a fisherman. You know, when he has no nothing else to do after, you know, he witnessing the resurrected Jesus, basically he, he go back to fishing. Keep up your routine. All right, he's a fisherman, so I can tell you that he's pretty much strong and eating healthily because they need all this, right, to, in order to, to, to fish. Now, what does Peter gain from all his struggle? Judas, on one hand, and his own life. Peter, this is his wisdom. He said, all of you clothe yourselves with humanity toward one another because God opposed the proud and sh but show favor to the humble. So humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Why it has to be in due time? Why is not as soon as po possible? Right at this moment when you humble yourself. No, it is not. You humble yourself and God is going to lift you up in due time. That means there's a period of waiting. There's a period of hoping even when you are in depressions. And how do you cope? The Bible say, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I know that you are depressed. I know that you are anxious. There's so many worries. But remember, never stop to cast your anxiety on you because knowing one thing, that God cares for you. And what? Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a rolling lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because he, you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Now, the suffering that we are going through is not the same as the early believers. You know, they were persecuted. But very many of them, same thing. When your life is difficult, when your life is being challenged, or when, when at any moment you have no idea that you can be killed, I'm pretty sure a lot of the believers, they were depressed too. But what do what was the advice of Peter? Cast your anxiety and God, on God and guide your mind. Do not trust your emotion. Do not trust how you are feeling at that moment because we need to be of sober minds. Why? Because that's where the enemy start to attack. It is like a rolling lion looking for someone to devour. How does it devour you? It's going to start sowing negative thought in your mind. It's going to start going to tell you, you are so depressed. Do you know why? Because you are worthless. You do not amount to anything. God does not love you. So it's going to start sowing all this negative thought in your mind. You will never achieve anything in your life. You might as well end your life. Kill yourself. That's what happened. So when you are depressed, what do you do? Eat, keep your routine, read your Bible, do your devotions, and in your prayer, cast all your anxiety to God. Amen, brother and sister. Before I end, I just want to share with you the Bible in Hebrews 4 say that we have a high priest that intercedes for us all the time. And he has gone through all of human suffering. And at one point, our dear Lord Jesus, he was in deep 
depression too. What does it say? This is right before he was hanged on the cross and he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. You see, when Jesus was, dep was depressed, what does he want? He was asking for a support group. But, uh, you know, Peter, James, and John, they fell asleep. Remember, he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all these things are possible for you. Remove this cup for me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. So, brothers and sisters, sometimes we face sufferings in our life. We do not know why. We do all the checklists. It is not sin. It is not physical imbalance. It is not people are mean to you. Whatever, you're just going through this intense period and you can't even pinpoint why. That's the time you need to trust God. Amen. Trust God because out of it, you will gain a new revelations of who truly God is. Now, as I end, I'd like to share a song with you and this scripture. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart. Okay, let's um, just worship God together. Okay, I have to do this share screen one more time. Let's prepare our hearts as we worship God and just give thanks to God for all His goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be Pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be. Shalom, brother and sister in Christ. So good to meet you. Okay, there's some technical issue here. Um, let's just uh, uh, give thanks as we end this meeting. Father God, we want to thank you. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for we learn um, more about depressions. Sometimes we go through it, we experience it, yet we do not understand why. And we can end up feeling defeated, feeling de uh, 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 depressed, do not see the end of the turner, the, the light of the end of turner, and do not find, uh, cannot find ways out of this uh, intense uh, sadness. So, Father God, I pray that through this sharing that we all learn there is a purpose of sufferings. And there are various types of depressions. And no matter what we are experiencing, that we pray that through these sharings, we will learn how to cope with it. And as we go back to um, in-person worship next week in church, I just pray that it's some of us that we've been isolating ourselves for such a long time. 
and we lack the confidence to go out again. And I pray that God, you will grant them the faith and the confidence that they will take all the necessary uh, precaution and steps so that they know that they can trust you. They know that they, it's important to see the friends and, and, and families of faith. And then they will make the first steps of rejoining our brothers and sisters in person worship. And I pray that God, for those that are uh, going through these uh, periods of sadness or depressions, that they will build up the right coping skill by surrounding themselves with um, good friends and family, especially families of faith, that they will uh, regain that uh, routines, the healthy lifestyles by eating right, sleeping right, exercise right, and last but not least, by thinking right, by casting all the anxieties in uh, unto you so that they can trust you. They know that God, you take care of them. So I want to thank you for this wonderful, beautiful Sunday. God, you are with us. And as now and always, you love us with unconditional love. So we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen.